Attention, the following broadcast has been approved by Outcasted OC. Viewer discretion is advised. Incoming transmission in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. What's going on guys, welcome back to Outcasted OC. Here talking about the NXT review that I've got coming up for you. A show that did a really good job of making me excited for the next show next week. But that's not necessarily a good thing. We've got a good couple of matches and a good couple of segments out of this show. But it, it, it just did a really good job making me hype for the ECW arena next week because we've got a lot of cameo appearances. We've got some great matches announced. We, we, we've got a lot to talk about on this episode today. So let's just get straight into it. We've got a casket match to talk about. We've got Tate and Paxton taking on Wendy Chu, the first women's casket match in WWE history, apparently. That sounds kind of weird to me. I, I thought we would have had one by now. I'm pretty sure I can recall having one, but... Maybe not. Maybe I'm just being crazy. It is, however, the only second one in history to happen in NXT. That being the last one, Grayson Waller versus Apollo Crews. Um, I've got another fact for you. Apparently, it's only the seventh casket match in history that doesn't include either The Undertaker or Kane. Uh, I don't know what you're going to do with any of those facts, but, you know, they're just interesting to know. Uh, so we got Tate Paxley and Wendy Chu in this match. Wendy Chu coming out on a bed looking absolutely creepy as hell, fitting for Halloween. She looked absolutely amazing. Um, I'm very surprised that Wendy Chu did not win this match, to be honest with you. I feel like we need some momentum going for Wendy Chu, but it looks like WWE are behind Tate and Paxley at the moment. Um, there's some great spots that happen in this match. Uh, there's a part where they both fall into the casket at the same time, but obviously the match cannot end there. Um, Tate and Paxley does, however, end up throwing Wendy Chu through her own bed. The bed snaps, and then she throws it in the casket for the one, two, three. Uh, wait, kind of. It's not It's not a pinfall, Reese. You, you, they shut the lid. I, I don't know what I'm talking about. They just shut the lid. I don't know, what, I, I don't know where I was going with that whole one, two, three. I mean, like, you know, maybe... Let's just move on, okay? Tatum Paxley wins this match. Um, she has got a bit of momentum now heading into whatever she's going to be doing. I'm not really sure what it is, to be honest with you. I mean, she's not really any champ in any championship pitches at the moment. She's not in the women's tag team division. She's not really going after the women's North American or the women's championship at the moment. I mean, that, that, them, the, that, that division is packed at the top of NXT at the moment. So I can't really see her being involved in any of that right now let's stay on the women for the moment because speaking of the women's north american championship kalani jordan does want that title back she wants a match against fallon henley but nikita lyons is standing in her way we get a match later on in the night where nikita lyons challenges fallon henley uh, sorry uh, challenges kalani jordan the winner of that match surely will get a number one contender spot for the north american championship rizzo Early in the night, says to the tone of D'Angelo family that she needs to handle some business. We do see that business being handled in this match where she comes out, distracts Nikita Lyons, allowing Kalani Jordan to get the 1-2-3. I used it in the right perspective there, or the right situation. I used it in the right way. I'm, just, I'm not even going to try fancy words. I used it in the right way there because there actually was a pinfall. Um, after this match, Rizzo gets straight into the ring, starts beating down Nikita Lyons. Uh, the Tony D fam will come out to break up Rizzo from um, Nikita Lyons. Uh, it looks like we're going to be getting a little rivalry. It looks like Nikita was the one to attack Rizzo last week. I get the feeling that her and Oberfemi are working together. I don't know if we're going to be seeing more of that, but that's the vibe that I definitely got a couple of weeks ago. Heading on later on into this night, we get some more women's division developments. Now, obviously... Zaria has been making her appearances on NXT for a couple of weeks now, but this is her first match against Brinley Reese. And to be honest with you, this match is inconsequential. It just is there to basically show how dominant Zaria is. Uh, Brinley Reese gets pretty much destroyed throughout the whole match. One, two, three, Zaria wins. Now, Fatal Influence come out and say, you know, we don't, we, we don't forget what you did to us um, at Halloween Havoc after we won the North American Championship. As we know, Zaria came out and destroyed all three members of Fatal Influence. Um, while Fatal Influence are making their way to the ring, Cora Jade and Roxanne Perez come out and say, you know, we don't want to step on your parade, Fatal Influence, but we also want to talk to Zaria for a moment, uh, because obviously Zaria made her appearance at the end of the women's tag team uh, match uh, at Halloween Havoc 2. So Zaria was all over that card, so it looks like it's going to be five on one. Zaria is in the ring by herself until... Kalani Jordan, Julia, and Stephanie Vakur jump in the ring to defend Zaria. Roxanne Perez is like four on five. You know, 
that's fine with us. We've still got the numbers until we hear that famous siren and none other than Jordan Grace makes her way down to the ring. A big massive brawl ensues. Everyone gets thrown everywhere. Obviously, the baby faces get the advantage. Next week, it is announced that your women's champion, Roxanne Perez, and her best friend in the world, Cora Jade, along with your North American champion, Fallon Henley, and the rest of Fatal Influence, are going to be having a 10-woman tag team match against two. Well against Kalani Jordan, against Stephanie Vakor, against Julia, against... <laughs> There's so many big names in this match. Against Jordan Grace and against Zaria. Okay, then. Just a giant women's match made of out of absolutely nothing and absolutely nowhere. I'm, absolute, I, I'm, I'm down for it. I'm so down for that. That is going to be a, an absolute cluster. I don't know how everyone's going to get the stuff in. I, I hope they give them enough time in the ring. But whatever happens, that that is going to be an absolutely amazing match. Another great match that is announced for next week, or was announced on Halloween Havoc, but we get more information uh, tonight, is we're going to be getting a hardcore women's match between Jada Parker and Lola Vice with a special guest enforcer, ECW original and former WWE women's wrestler Dawn Marie. That's right. Al, <laughs> it's Al Wilson's former wife. You know the one who died while they were sleeping together. That that storyline. Does everyone remember that storyline? I think that's the thing that Dawn Marie is most known for. I mean, yeah, she's an ECW original, but I feel like everyone knows Dawn Marie for for, for the shagging storyline. She shagged Tory Wilson's dad to to death. Yeah, that's how I know her anyway. That that that's how I grew up knowing Dawn Marie. Let me know in the comments what your favorite Dawn Marie segment is. Oh, God. Swiftly moving on. Let's go to some title matches, shall we? Let's go to the Heritage Cup match. We get Lexus King with William Regal in his corner, um, taking on Charlie Dempsey for the Heritage Cup. Now, obviously, there's a bit of a wrinkle here because William Regal is Charlie Dempsey's father. However, he is the corner man for Lexus King. Will it make a difference? No. No, it won't. Charlie Dempsey wins back-to-back -back falls. He wins 2-0. Lexus King refuses to play any dirty tricks because he's not his father. He's a different man. And this ends up costing him in the match. William Regal looks frustrated with Lexus King. And Lexus King looks frustrated with himself. However, I'm quite happy that Charlie Dempsey is able to retain here tonight. Um, I, th I thought it was an interesting segment to... I thought it was rushed a little bit, to be honest with you. I thought this could have had a little bit more build with William Regal maybe training Lexus King up because he knows Charlie Dempsey. Obviously, that's his kid. Maybe we could have left that a couple more weeks, but they decided to do it like a couple of days after we, after Halloween Havoc when William Regal announced that he was going to be uh, Lexus King's corner man. That, that's just me. I would have left it a couple more weeks, let it simmer, let it stew, get a bit of backstage segments with Lexus King, but maybe they're building up on something here, so I'm not going to judge it as harshly as I usually would have. Speaking of champions, let's go to your NXT champion, Trick Williams, who is in the ring, who calls out Bubba Ray Dudley or Bully Ray Dudley. He gets called both of those names uh, tonight, and he wants to ask him something. HBK invited him tonight, and Trick Williams wants to talk to him in the ring. He gets out Bubba Ray Dudley, and he says, thank you for having my back on Sunday. When Ridge Holland and Ethan Page was beating me down, you had my back. I just want to say, by the way, that Trick Williams did give Ethan Page his props before he invited out Bully Ray, uh, saying, you know, we took him to places that he'd never been before. The only reason he's not in the hospital is because of Bully Ray. Um, you know, he did feel pain that he's never felt. And Ethan Page is just, he's good. He's great. Fair, fair enough. Like, you know, um, I, like, I like to see Ethan Page getting his props. Bully Ray comes out and says, I don't know, I don't know much about you. But within like three minutes that I've been out here, you've got me absolutely hyped. Trick Williams says, I want revenge on Ridge Holland and on Ethan Page. So, next week at the ECW Arena, I propose a tag team match. Ethan Page and Ridge Holland versus Trick Williams and Bubba Ray Dudley. Now, Bubba Ray is very hesitant about this. He's like, you've got me absolutely hyped up. I'm thinking about next week. Um, I want to dress it. I want to dress old school. You know, maybe going the whole tie dye thing. I, I'm really, I really want to get in that ring with you and maybe say, "Trick, get the tables." But even though that he was disrespected by Ridge Holland, by like you know, busted open was disrespected by Ridge Holland. 
he can't accept because he doesn't want to take anyone else's spot in that NXT locker room. You've got some of the best people in the world back there and he does not want to take their spot. And for now, that is the end of the segment. But we're going to go straight to the next segment because Ethan Page is out later on in the night and he's talking about how he is not done with the NXT Championship. He is interrupted by Ridge Holland who says you've had plenty of chances at that NXT Championship and yeah, you won it when you first came but you've had multiple opportunities. You defended that championship. You lost that championship. You went up against Trick Williams. You still couldn't get the job done. So it's time to step aside. Now, Bubba Ray Dudley comes out and interrupts this and tells Ethan Page, well, he doesn't really speak to Ethan Page, kind of ignores him, but he tells Rich Holland that he felt disrespected by him. Like, he didn't really know anything about Rich Holland until last week. A couple of people have clued him up in the locker room. He was a great rugby player. He shattered both of his legs and was able to come back in eight months and there's big respect for that. But that's where the respect ends because you disrespected my radio show, you disrespected my co-host. I can't remember his name at this. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't watch Busted Open. Bully Ray kind of gets on my nerves on, on, on that radio show, to be honest with you. So I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't really watch it. And most of all, he disrespected uh, me. So he says... Well, basically, he, he, he basically calls him a prick. Uh, but Rich Holland says, listen, you want to back off and go away, go back doing your radio show because you're going to get put in the hospital. Uh, Rich Holland gets a punch in the face from Bubba Ray Dudley. And then obviously Ethan Page gets, you know, hits him from behind, starts beating him down and a brawl ensues. Trick Williams is there, fortunately, to save Bully Ray. And Bully Ray picks up the microphone and says he still won that tag team match for next week. So it looks like we are getting that tag team match. We're getting in the ECW arena. Think about this. In the ECW arena, for the first time in God, know how, God knows how long. It might even be since One Night Stand 2005. Which was a long, long time ago. It's nearly 20 years ago. Obviously, Bully Ray has had matches since then. But the very first time in the ECW arena in 20 years, we're going to be getting Bubba Ray Dudley teaming with Trick Williams, taking on Ethan Page and Rich Holland. I'm absolutely excited for that match. I cannot wait for that. I can't wait for the ma uh, for the whole show to be in the ECW arena, to be honest with you. I, it's always a different vibe when it's in there. The, the the crowd, hopefully they get like an ECW crowd in there. It's going to be great. Obviously, we're going to be getting a women's hardcore match. Uh, we're going to be getting this tag team match. And we're going to be getting another 10-woman tag team match as well. Um, looks like we're going to be getting a couple more um, ECW alumni making their appearances. Rob Van Dam. Um, makes his appearance tonight and says he wants to do something next week in the ECW arena. We'll get to that in a minute, what Rob Van Dam might be doing. Um, there's a backstage segment where Tony D'Angelo um, gets a phone call, gets a voicemail from uh, Nunzio, uh, form of the full-blooded uh, full Italians, saying he didn't check in when he was coming to Philadelphia uh, next week, and that's not how we do things, so... It looks like we're going to be getting a. It looks like we're going to be getting a, a bit, a bit of an appearance from the FBI, which is going to be great. Um, <laughs> the old full-blooded Italians um, and the Tony D'Angelo family. That's going to be interesting to see. I can't wait for that. Um, let's move on to your main event. The main event. I don't know. I, I don't know how I feel about the main event. To be honest with you, NXT Tag Team Championships on the line. The young OG Javon Evans and Cedric Alexander taking on the champions, Axiom and Nathan Frazier. Um, Obviously, the in-ring action is amazing. These four guys are fast as hell. Uh, the chemistry, beautiful chemistry. Um, I, I really feel like this match deserved a little bit more time, to be honest with you. I thought the ending was a little bit strange. I'm not sure why Javon Evans would ever abandon Cedric Alexander the way he did. I understand that he's got beef with uh, Wesley. I get that. I, I t I'm totally on board with a future uh, you know, rivalry between Javon Evans and Wesley. But... I just don't feel like it's in Javon's character to just abandon his partner. That's just, it just doesn't sit right in my head, to be honest with you. Not just that, I'm kind of over the tag team, the tag team of Nathan Fraser and Axiom. Uh, they had a little bit of a dissension in this match as well, where Nathan Fraser seems to be taking on this hothead persona ever since he had a conversation with Randy Orton. Axiom was getting quite annoyed with him, having to tag himself in multiple times. But by the end of this match, Sergio Calazander is by himself. He hits a lumbar check for a two count. However, he gets on top. Uh, ready to hit a big splash. Nathan Fraser gets on there. He hits a uh, superflex, uh, superplex along with a Falcon Arrow slash Brain Buster for the one, two, three. Na uh, Axiom and Nathan Fraser retain. 
Meanwhile, backstage, we are getting a segment where Javon Evans and Wesley are still fighting. And Rob Van Dam says, you've just given me an idea of what I want to do next week. Um, it looks like it's probably going to be like a, sp uh, like a special guest referee or something. It, it, Rob Van Dam is going to be involved somehow. Preferably, I would have I wanted him to have a match, to be honest. He still looks in like really good shape, Rob does. Uh, but, it, you know, we're not going to get that, it looks like. Uh, Bully Ray, at least, is going to be in a tag team match next week. And we're going to be seeing Dawn Marie and Nunzio. So that's going to be interesting to see. Guys, let me know what you think in the comments, what you thought of NXT this week. I really enjoyed it, and it really made me excited for next week's show in the ECW Arena in Philadelphia. That's going to be absolutely amazing. Um, guys, if you like the video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content. Go check out Courtney's review of Monday Night Raw from yesterday, and also stay tuned for Thursday, where we're going to be giving the Crown Jewel predictions on the podcast. Also, we have got a smack down review coming for you Saturday morning from either G or Ross so stay tuned for that if you want to go follow us on any of our social medias guys on X Instagram and on TikTok we are at Outcasted OC we post a lot of clips there a lot of uh, unique content so make sure you go check us out there but for now guys I hope you have an absolutely amazing Thursday wherever you are let's get extreme next week peace out <laughs>